Good afternoon. So today we are talking about uh, content first, uh, the approach, uh, things that are wrong with that, I think, and things that are right with that. But first I have a question for you. How many people played the game of telephone when you were a kid? You'd all line up in a line, right? And one person would say something in the first person's ear, and it'd get repeated all the way down the line. And by the time you got to the last person and they said it out loud, the message the first person had had completely changed or been misunderstood along the way. By the time it was regurgitated and repeated over and over down the line, the last person didn't have the same message, but yet they were trying to say, the same thing, right? Never, hardly, when you ever played the game of telephone, did it ever come out where the, the person at the end had the same intent and meaning as the first person that started, which was kind of why the game was fun. But this can be really problematic when you experience the same thing when you're talking about business concepts. So the idea of working content first in a website design project, in any kind of design project, uh, is similar, kind of what happened to that message, is similar to what happens in a game of telephone. Right? Very rarely have I seen people communicate the truth of what the idea of content first, what the intention of the content first approach actually meant. So the original intention, if you look back uh, it was like 2008-ish when the first few people, uh, leaders in the design industry, people who were blogging before blogging was a huge thing, uh, posted some blog posts. They shared some articles about uh, using a content-first approach. And then what happened was all the sheep in the design industry said, yes, that's so right. And they all started regurgitating that same message. And we've seen it in blog posts and on social media and at events. And we see all of these people talking about content first. But the problem is most of those people didn't actually read the original articles. They saw the tweet or they heard the idea content first. And over time, what that intent was had eroded. And now we have lots of people who completely misunderstand what that means, and it's causing problems, right? The idea of working content first has all of a sudden become an avenue for other people to tell you that you're doing it wrong. And I think that that's crap, right? That's not okay. I have had people tell me, and I've been doing client work for 20 years, I've had people tell me as recently as last week, you're doing it wrong. I kind of think the loads of testimonials and happy clients I have say otherwise, um, but people still want to say, you're doing it wrong. And part of the reason why I wanted to submit this talk and talk about this today is because I'm tired of people telling other people that they're doing it wrong because they're not doing it their way. And I'm tired of people telling you that you're doing it wrong because of something they misunderstood in the first place. So we're talking about Content first, but first we have to address the giant misunderstanding here in that most people read content first and thought that meant I'm not going to start design until the content is done. Content first doesn't mean content done first. Right? That's not, that was never the intention of what using a content first approach meant. Now, I read these things online. I read all the stuff, I went to the conferences, I listened to the people talk about how you should do content first and how they said that meant you should have the content done first. And occasionally I run into designers and I run into people that they're like, I don't even start the website until I get final content from the client. And I was like, I'll give it a try. I'm willing to try anything, right? Maybe they got it right. And I gave it a try and I thought, I'll try it on like three client projects and we'll see how it goes. They are the worst three projects I've ever done in my entire career. They were the crappiest, the clients had the worst experience, and I lost my butt. And here's the problem, right? When I made clients get their content done first, 
Like, I'm not even gonna start working with you unless you have your content done. The clients are like, what do you want me to do? Boop it out? Like, I'm not a copywriter. I don't know what I'm doing. I've never done this before. I don't build websites for a living. I don't know what to put on my about page. I don't know what to put on my home page. I don't know what pages I even need. You're telling me that it, I need to have it done first? So what happens? They procrastinate, and they procrastinate, and they procrastinate, and all of a sudden, you took a deposit for a project, and four months have gone by, five months have gone by, and you still haven't even started because they haven't finished their content, and it's because they don't know what to say. There you're having to make it up. Case scenario one, the other issue I ran into, get your content done first, then I'll talk to you. Client puts tons of effort into getting their content done. They give it to me, and I'm like, based on the goals we just talked about, this isn't gonna work, right? Based on the goals you're telling me you want to achieve with your site, based on the priorities of actions, the things you want people to do on your site, if we use this content, you're not gonna achieve your goals. And I had to go back and say, well, I'm, I'm glad you did all that work, but I actually need this instead. Or I actually need you to do more work. Or I need you to write something different. Or we have to change this. And the client would get so mad. Why didn't you tell me this up front? Right? So I gave it a fair shot, the idea of content done. And because it was such a massive failure for me, and my clients were so unhappy, and one, we actually parted ways and never even actually built the site. I went back and started looking at where the idea of getting content done first actually came from and how on earth people can do this successfully, right? So I started looking at it, and again, I told you I've been shamed for this approach. Every time I talk about the fact that I don't get content from clients first, they're like, you're doing it wrong. Twitter last week totally happened. Today, we're dispelling those myths, we're squashing all of those misunderstandings, we're setting things straight, right? We're talking about what the original intention was. What content first actually means and how it applies to your projects and how it applies to web design and client work and providing extraordinary client experiences. So, content first does not mean content done first. Most of the time. I also am a firm believer there's no one way is the right way. So there's no general approach that says this is the only way that's ever going to work. But for the sake of today, I'm saying content first doesn't mean content done first. And it wasn't the original intention. So there's a quote, if you look, there's a Smashing Magazine article from several years ago. And there's a quote from uh, a guy named Mark Bolton. And he says, content first is not about writing final content before doing anything. It's about knowing the structure of the content you're designing for. You can create good experiences without knowing the content. But what you can't do is you can't create good experiences without knowing the content structure. So content first means the strategy and the structure comes first. Because to create good content, you have to have context for that content. You have to know what you're creating it for. So there's a quote that goes out all the time. Design in the absence of content is not design, it's decoration, right? People say this when they're preaching the content first, right? If you don't have content first, you're not doing web design, you're just decorating things. I wanna change that. My preference would be design in the absence of content strategy is not design, it's decoration, right? When you're, when you're designing something with no clear strategy, then you're just designing it to look pretty. Content strategy and a clear structure of how the content is going to flow, on what's going to be on each page, of what the different content types are, right? That provides the critical context needed to both content and design. So, excuse me, a content-first approach isn't design with content, it's design based on content. So it's how you can get started with the design of a site without having final content. Because you've mapped out the strategy, 
you understand the structure of what you need, you know what you're designing for, you might have an idea of headlines and certain things like that, you're designing based on what has been outlined and done. So I design sites without completed content all the time, but I don't design sites without a content strategy in place. Right, you have to understand what you're designing for. It's why we talk with clients at the beginning of projects about what goal do you have for this site, right? What's the purpose of us doing this project? What results do you wanna see? And then what do you want people to do when they get to that site? Right, if they come to your site and they only do one thing, what is it that you want them to do? If they love you and they stay longer and they do two things, what's the second thing you want them to do before they leave? If they absolutely fall in love with your brand and they stay longer, what's the third thing? Right, and then the question from there goes, based on each page that they're on, how do we get someone to take that first action from this page? And the next page, how do we get someone to move from here to take that action from this page? When you understand those things and you have that strategy, you have that context, design makes sense. And when you do that work up front, the client can be working on the content at the same time you're working on the design because you're both working from the same strategy. So again, design needs strategy. Without content strategy and understanding of that, the design is not effective, it's just pretty. Strategy gives context, right? So strategy first, content first, it means think about the content first. Create the plan. Give people direction of what they need to write, of what needs to be created, right? Now, design brings visual content or visual context to the content strategy. So you have a strategy in place, design makes it visual, it brings it to life. Now, semantic HTML, it gives meaning to the content for search engines and, every, and, and things like that, right? That HTML, the way that you're tagging things, the way that you're coding things, that's giving it meaning as well. CSS dictates the appearance of the content and the design. When you have a clear strategy in place, not only could the client be working on content, not only could the designer be working on design, but a developer could get started at the beginning of a project, not waiting all the way until design is done, but a developer could get going at the beginning of the project, understanding what the content structure is going to be and start getting the basic HTML, the semantic HTML done of the structure of the site. They won't be able to do the CSS yet because the design's not done. But if you're working on rush projects or projects with tight timelines, doing a content first approach with strategy and structure first allows multiple facets of your team to all be working towards the same goal at the same time. So what this means for you. New websites, if you are working on a brand new website with a client, this will help you, right? One of the very first things that you have to do with a content first approach is understand the goal of the site Prioritize the actions like we talked about. You need to document the buyer journey, right? How do they go from a blog post to a conversion? How do they go from the services page to a conversion? How do they go from the home page to a conversion? You want to look at documenting the site map. You want to look at uh, the overall content structure. What is the structure of the content on the actual page itself? Right, and that's where we talk about wireframing. So all of these things done first, all of a sudden, creating your content gets much, much easier. Creating the design gets much easier. If you have had projects where clients have procrastinated and delayed and you've run into delays where the site hasn't launched on time because the client never got their content done on time, or you waited and waited and waited for content, doing this first will help eliminate those problems will help eliminate those delays because clients don't do their content when they aren't sure what to do. When they have a clear roadmap of what needs to be created and how it's gonna be used, then all of a sudden it feels easier and they get it done. If you're redesigning an existing site, the process is similar, but there's a couple other things you've gotta look at. 
You have to do an audit of all existing content on the site. You also want to look at the analytics. What pages are people visiting and what pages are no, is nobody going to? Right? If people are, nobody are going to some of the pages on the site, if the traffic is super low, it either means nobody cares about that or the content on that page isn't very valuable. So you have to audit the content that already exists and you want to look at the analytics and find out what's going on and how people are using the site so you can make educated decisions about how to move forward. Uh, another one that's a little bit different uh, is outlining uh, content structure and content types. That's looking at what do we have that we're going to keep, what do we have that needs to be refined, and what do we need that's new. Right? Understanding those things up front, again, creates context for moving forward. Now, you can't use the same approach for content strategy, design, development. You cannot use the same approach for a $3,000 project as you can for a $13,000 project, as you can for a $30,000 project, as you can for a $300,000 project. And here's the problem. Those people that started talking about a content-first approach, those thought leaders that were looked up to and revered and looked at as their word being gospel. They said content first. And like I said, all the sheep said, yes, you're right. And then they all started writing about it, misunderstanding the whole point. Here's the problem. Most of those people worked with enterprise level clients. Most of those people worked with clients that had in-house marketing teams and copywriters and ad agencies and account reps and all kinds of things like that. Guess what strategy doesn't work for the mom and pop shop on the corner? The same one that works for an enterprise level company with an in-house creative team. Right? So you have to look at who, you, I always, in raising my children, we're trying to make them more self-aware of themselves and the people around them, right? Know your audience, understand your surroundings, but we're also trying to teach them to know where your content is coming from, right? To be aware of where the message they're hearing is coming from, right? And that it may not always apply to them. Or you might have to not take it word for word. You might have to not take it so literally. You might have to look for the part that is relevant to you. So wireframes are kind of a perfect example of this. You have a lot of designers and a lot of developers that work uh, at the enterprise level. I've talked, to, uh, I've talked to friends that work in the enterprise, and I work with small businesses. And we've had discussions, and they're like, you don't wireframe every single project? You're doing it wrong. Has anybody been told that? I can't be the only person that's heard that. Are you serious? All right, well, I'll own it. Yes, thank you. Uh, so no, I don't wireframe every project. People don't have enough money for me to do that on every project, right? Like, it'll come down to their budget. So if you take the 3,000, 13,000, 30,000, 300,000 dollar project, for $3,000, you cannot afford to have me wireframe out your whole website. Like, that's a joke, I'm not doing it. For 13, Totally, I will wireframe it out, but more than likely, I'm doing it on graph paper while I'm watching Netflix. And then I'll take a picture of it on my phone, and I send it to you, and I'm like, let's talk about this. Or I pull up the pictures that I took of it on my kitchen floor, like on my giant graph paper, and then we're looking at them on Zoom. Because for that budget range, that's what makes sense. For a $30,000 project, I'm an illustrator, and I'm like dialing in good official wireframes, like the legit ones. Um, for a larger project like that, I have not, I don't do those, but my friends that do, their wireframes are not only legit and done, but they're talking about and outlining the pattern libraries, the styles, the typefaces. They're looking at those things all in the wireframing phase. Somebody at $3,000 can't afford that, right? So that's a small snapshot of looking at content and of looking at design and of looking at people in the industry in general who are talking about how things should be done, right? If you are serving, uh, a, if you are serving a freelancer, if you're serving small business, if you're serving the enterprise, if you're serving that not quite enterprise so you don't have to deal with all the bureaucracy, lots of people have opinions on how you should be doing business, 
They write blog posts about it. They speak about it. They're going to tell you all the ways that you should be doing things and all the things that you're doing wrong. But here's the deal. They're not always right because they may not serve the same client base as you. They may not have the same, you may not have the same resources they do. They may not have the same background that you do. Right? So when you're listening to somebody who creates some mantra like content first, go back and look at what kind of clients do they work with? Are they the same as yours? No? Okay, well, let's look at what their message is. And instead of just taking it for gospel, look at what their message is and see what piece is relevant to your business and your clients and what you do. Because they're not wrong. It just may not be the right advice for your clients and your business. Right? I said earlier, there's no one right way to do anything. There are lots of different ways to get things done. There's no one way that's the right way and one way that's the wrong way. Right? But you have to look at what's the best way for you. So when we talk about content first, when we talk about the idea of building projects from, not from design, you know, we look at most of the time people outline their design process on their website, and they're like, discovery, design, development, deployment, like every site ever, right? Content's not in there, anywhere. So for years and years and years, designers and developers have talked about, we do discovery and then we do design, but I wanna look at that content first approach needs to be, we do discovery, we do strategy, we do design and content, right? When you have a large business that has in-house teams, that has copywriters, that has budgets to hire copywriters, content process is a little bit different. You can totally do content done first at that level because the people you're playing with understand what they're doing. The mom and pop shop around the corner, the freelancer who's starting their very first business, other small to medium-sized businesses that don't have in-house teams, they don't build websites for a living. They don't write content for a living. The extent of their writing is usually emails or maybe proposals or internal memos. So asking them again to get their content done up front causes problems. But asking them to get their content done with a strategy mapped out, with structure already defined. All they have to do is create according to the plan that you come up with together. All of a sudden, that becomes easier. Now, I talked about how I don't wireframe projects at $3,000. Um, content first approach and content strategy changes based on budget as well, right? The kind of strategy you do for a $3,000 project isn't the same kind of strategy you're going to do for a $30,000 project because their budget just doesn't allow it. And you also are going to look at the technical expertise of your clients. Some clients are going to understand all that, and some clients aren't. I'm sure maybe you have worked with, I can't imagine that you haven't, clients where if you sent them a wireframe, they'd be like, what is this? My website is blank. I don't understand. And it would cause you more of a pain and more heartache than it was even worth it to do the wireframe in the first place. Those people, you wouldn't do a wireframe for because they don't even understand what they're looking at. Some projects are simple enough where you don't need to do that. Content strategy is sometimes is the same thing. So sometimes I'm talking with other freelancers. I teach a course called Profitable Project Plan, and I get a lot of questions about content. And we were talking about it on one of the live Q&A calls the other day. Um, and I said, well, some clients, like, I do content strategy for in my head or on paper, but I don't actually talk to the client about it because they wouldn't understand anyway um, because they're just not at that level. Right? They want it done, but that's not something they're, that they're into. It's not something I want to dive into in their budget range. Right? So sometimes I'm doing it internally. I'm documenting it for my own process and being able to do uh, a design that does them justice and their goal justice. But it may not be something I dive into deeply with the client because 
they simply don't have the budget or the technical expertise and understanding. Right? So in a lot of those cases, one of the things that we do in our, in our agency is when design is over, all of the approved mock-ups go in a content checklist. And I number every piece of content in the mock-ups that they approve, and next to the mock-up in the PDF is the number and instructions. This is what I need. This is how many characters it should be. This is how many lines it should be. And we give the client a content checklist, and they look at the mock-up, and they look at the numbers, and they look at the instructions, and they get a Word doc that matches it, and they just fill in the blanks. And since I started doing that, I've never had a project not launch on time because of content. But it's figuring out what worked best for me, because I talked to my other friends, and they're like, I would never do business like that. And I'm like, right, because you don't work with the same kind of clients that I do. So if there's only one thing that I want you to remember from this talk today, is that there's no one singular right way to do anything. You have to do what's best for you. So when people are out there, if you hear people talking about content first, Remember, it was never intended from day one to mean content done first. It was meant to be think about the content first. Think about the strategy. Think about the structure of the pages. Think about the goal of the site and the conversion and how to move people from where they're at on the site, wherever it may be, to that conversion. And what works for you may not work for somebody else, right? If you're reading a blog post and someone's telling you how to do it, their strategy may not work for you. Ultimately, you have to look at your business, your skills, your systems, your processes, and your clients, and you have to do what's best for you. So I am Jennifer Bourne. That is it for today. These are all the places that you can find me. Very nice. And I believe we have time for Q&A. Absolutely. Questions for Perfect. Them. Do we have any questions? Anything related to content? It looks like you nailed it. Yes. <laughs> oh, there's one. Oh. I was going to say, um, there can't be no questions. You said it kind of quickly, if you mind saying it again, about the, the before they do the fill in the blanks, what was it that you gave them? Could oh, you yes. Go through that again. So the question was, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the content checklist? Uh, so if you've heard about a piece of software called uh, Content Snare, it's a software version of my process. I just figured out this software existed a few months ago, and I was looking at it, and I called the guy that built it, and I said, it's like you read my mind. This is the entire thing that I do, but in software. Um, so when we finish design, the mock-ups that the client approved of the custom page templates, the home page, all the templates that they saw and approved, we drop them into a PDF. We, I use InDesign, so I drop them into an InDesign file, and I number each piece of content on every mock-up. And I do that for a couple reasons. So I number them. Next to the mock-up are all the numbers and instructions, what that piece of content is and what I need from the client. If it's in a divine space and we haven't already mapped, we haven't already covered what the headlines are, I give them a character count. Uh, now I said I number them for two reasons, the pieces of content for two reasons. The first reason is that in the Word templates that I give them, and I've tried it in Google Docs and other things, and just everybody knows Microsoft Word. So the Word templates are tables, and in the tables there's fields and they're labeled with the numbers and the labels of what the content is that I need, and then blank, a blank space, and they just fill it all in. So when I need to put their content into the site, I open up the Word doc for the About page, and it's number one, headline, and they put it in. It's number two, and it's this, and they put it in. It's number three, three boxes. Box one, headline, some headline, 100 word text, button text. I just have to copy and paste, copy and paste, and I'm not sorting through a mess of content that's totally disorganized. Uh, so that's the first reason why I number it, because it matches what's in my Word doc. The second reason I number it is because when a client calls and they're like, I have questions about this piece of content, I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm not even sure where, what page are you talking about? I'm like, just tell me the number. 17? Yes. Okay, I know what you're talking about. Here, let's get this done. And we can get it done way faster, right? So from the first thing on the home page to the last thing on the last template, I go from number one to as many as I need. 
I don't start over at number one for each mock-up. Because then, when the client has questions, I'm just like, what number are you working on? Yeah, okay, let's get it done. And it just makes it faster for me. Like, I'm like, how can I get everything done as fast as possible so I make as much money as possible? Um, so yeah, so that's, that's what we do. The first one took a long time. After that, it takes about an hour to create each one. Anybody else? Any other questions? Yes. Thanks for your presentation. Um, have you ever worked with a copywriting company and, and coordinated with them your project around kind of also their process of helping write copy for the client? Yes. Uh, the question was, have you ever worked with copywriters to help get content done for clients? Uh, in the past, I've worked with uh, copywriters uh, for a couple reasons. Uh, I've referred clients to copywriters, and I'm like, you are not getting it done. Like, you need to go and hire somebody. Uh, so there's uh, copywriters and copy editors. So sometimes I refer them to a copywriter. Sometimes I'll refer them to a copy editor if they have an, they can get stuff done, but it's just not good. Uh, I don't do that anymore, because for the last two or three years, I've written all the content for all the sites we've done. So, um, which I actually don't even build websites anymore, I only do content. But, uh, but yeah, so in terms of working with copywriters, I find bringing them in on the very, very first kickoff call when the project starts is the way to go. Right, As so the sooner you can bring them in, the better it's gonna be. So ideally, I like to, if I'm working with a third party copywriter with a client, because sometimes they come to me and they already have a copywriter in place. I'm like, uh, you should be on the strategy call too. Right, that way if you have questions about content, we can nail it all and get it all ironed out as well. So yeah, no problem. Yes, oh. over there. Um, this is not a question, it's more about sharing what I do. So on a kind of a 3K website, I often ask the client to do the wireframe. So after we have the discovery and we discuss their business and what their goals are and their objectives, and, and I've never had a client reject that idea. They've always been happy to do it. Oh yeah, most clients. And they clients... do the version where it's on a piece of paper right. with a marker and they take a shot of it with their phone and they send it to me. And right. that works really well for me. Oh yeah. Her, so she didn't have a question, but she wanted to share that uh, her clients write their own content. Uh, their and, own wireframe. Th hmm? Their own rough wireframe. They do their own wireframe? Well, I, this is after we've had a strategy discussion oh, and that's discovery. that's interesting. If it works so they for do you, a really do quick, it. And then I advise them if I think there's something wrong with it, but it really helps because they understand their own business really well. Wow. I'm I, talking about a 3K you must work with better. You must work with clients who understand conversion strategy much better than mine. <laughs> so that's awesome that that works for you. That's great. Does anybody else have one question before we wrap up? No? Great. Thank you. Another awesome. round of applause. Thanks.